This is Ash Mole Things Dentistry, the place where I'm passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Well, today we're going to be talking about series and next continuation in calcified cases because this one's really interesting and I've actually made this mistake a few times before. So I've, for some reason, I just want to share that with you. I'm not sure why. I also want to give a shout out to these two gentlemen called Zach Miner and Kevin Fryer. We just did a, uh, a podcast last night. They uh, asked me to, to talk about some some endo stuff, and I was super grateful for that. So check it out, the Very Dental Podcast. They have a very clinical Facebook group. Go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, these are the two gentlemen here. You probably will never see them, but um, because they're always in podcasting. I showed up, and I showered and brushed my hair because I'm at home right now in quarantine. Uh, little did I know, I thought it was a video, but it was only audio. So it's Kevin. He's called the hair guy. And uh, Zach, there's Zach right there. Great Guys, they had a great time. And one of the questions I asked them was, the past few um, cases I've been presenting are about 50 minutes. And I know that no one watches that. So I'm going to keep this to 10 minutes. I got my timer on. So, And if you, you know, put in the comments, if you want a longer one, we'll do longer. But uh, I only have attention for 10 minutes. But there's so much information I want to share with you. I just love, I love talking. So this is the case here. This, um, for my buddy Majid, he removed the restoration. It was a symptomatic tooth before he went to... Remove the existing restoration right here. It was curious, and then place a provisional restoration. But this is a more of a calcified case again. It's not as calcified as normal. But there's a couple of mistakes that I did in here. Well, not mistakes, but things you can learn from that I want to share with you. So tooth number one seven was symptomatic irreversible papitis with symptomatic apoperitonitis. And let's rock on. I got to keep it under ten minutes. So this is the provisional restoration. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be once we get in here. Uh, I remember. Um, so the real issue was that Magic couldn't find the distal buckle. He was asking me, have you ever had a two canal max three second molar? I'm like, well, yeah, but it makes you feel uneasy. But let's take a look and see what happens. And don't forget, he's a, a fine young prosthodontist on us uh, doing this emergency case. So I'm using my number four long surgical burr. And we're just going to be accessing it. Really what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line in my head from the palatal cusp to the mesial buccal cusp. And we're just removing that. Now, this is called triage. It's a Fuji, uh, not Fuji. It's a resin modified glass ionomer restoration. So it I don't even know if it is resin modified. Now I have to check, take a look because it's not like curable. Anyways, it's a glass ionomer restoration that is uh, pretty tough. It's great because it's pink so you can see what's going on. So we're getting down to where the cotton pellet is. Remove the cotton pellet, and I'll just spin that out. And I'm going to remove, you know, what I used to do is I used to just make it as small as possible. But honestly, in hindsight, in past experience, just remove as much as that provisional restoration. I'm going to keep this mesial margin, just sort of uh, as it keeps all the uh, irrigant in the tooth. Let's speed along here because I'm losing time. So we're going to start looking for some the calcified canals. Obviously, we're going to be looking for, there we go. So if we take a look here at our anatomy, here's our distal buccal, um, let me move that down, our distal buccal cusp, our mesial buccal cusp, and our palatal cusp. And I'm literally using the anatomy. So this is going to play a big part down the road. So we're going to look at this angle here. So if this is our MB1, for example, we're going to probably be looking, we're assuming because MB1 is usually the quickest one to find. We're going to assume that our distal buccal cusp is going to be somewhere around here in our palate because these two are the, these were the two that he found. So let's just zoom in there. So you can see always those magical things in textbooks. There's the pulpal floor. These are the walls kind of. It's hard to see in 2D as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Munts burr. And it was great to hear that Zach and both Zach and Kevin have Munts burrs. I love these things. But they're cheaper versions. So I'm going to do, oh, look at that. There it is. So there's actually a cheaper version called the Endo Tracer Burr from Comet, K-O-M-E-T. You can get it in the States. Also, I got it in Canada. And I shout out to a friend in Germany that put some comments. So all I did literally was using kind of the external anatomy was kind of like, yeah, we're going to go right, boom, there. And you can see this is the, that's the indicator of a little lost canal that we're finding. So we got some dentin debris put in there. And then that's our distal buckle. It was as simple as that. So Matt, my buddy Madge was so close yet so far. So that's pretty simple. We're going to do, you know, I'm going to keep this under 10 minutes. So that's looking for one canal. So if I'm, you know, if we're searching for lost things you can't find, I'm going to use the external anatomy of the tooth. Now, 
That's easy to do the, do it in this case because it's natural tooth. Now, if it's if it's a crown or whatnot, it makes it a little more complicated. But what I would do is uh, I would triangulate using the pul the pulpal floor, so you can see. But the difference is, you know, one of the things I'm using is a microscope with his microscope. Imagine it's amazing, like a microscope with a huge light that I can it'll call down these UFOs that the U.S. are now uh, the U.S. government is now saying are real. So um, short of that, definitely high magnification with a great light source. So I'm going to clean that out just a little bit more. I'm going to trough a little bit more. So what I'm doing here is I'm just troughing. Since we got our mesial 1, MB1, I'm just going to trough a little bit to look for MB2 real quick. And you can see, look what I'm seeing. We're getting a little bit of dent and debris into a little spot right there. So I'm going to remove, oh, and I see that. I'm like, oh, what's that? And then I kind of, it gets burnt. Oh, there's another, you know, this is what happens as we're doing the, the case starting to find things like this might be a little bit it's hard to see in 2d compared to with uh, the microscope but that might be a little spot that we might be we'll just get a little stick with our mic with our explorer so certainly and what i'm going to do here what you can see i'm doing here is i'm just removing a little more of the of the wall from the mesial now if you have you know if you're gripping the the, the gripping the top of your seat with your pants when you're doing this it's time to potentially you know i highly recommend using extracted teeth then you know how much you can go and how once you you, know, you do your endo section the tooth and see how much tooth is left so let's speed along here all right so in this case what had happened was i'm going to be searching okay obviously it's just a buckle we don't need to dig around there anymore and then there's our we're searching for mb2 right now now normally what i would do is i'm going to clean and shape mb1 distal buckle and palate right now because we've got great anesthesia. We're going to get any pulpal tissue remnants out of there and we're going to let them soak. So I'm looking in this little groove for MB2. Normally I don't do this. I'll be clean shape those canals real right off the bat. So let's see if I'm going to do that. I haven't done this case for about a month. Okay, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to clean and shape. We're going to open up our coronal two-thirds with our wave and go primary. Then I get working length. We're going to rip through this so it's not too boring. If you want to see the full 56-minute video, let me know, and I'll voice through the whole thing, tell you exactly what you want, and then uh, I'll post it as well. But just for the, our friends, mainly myself as well, we're going to do the shortened version right now. All right, so the thing that I really want to entice you to stick around for the rest of this video is that that canal that you think is MB1 is actually MB2. Now look at the reverse architecture of that fan. Look at this. So if we know that, so once we clean and shaped everything, so we clean and shape everything to working length. Look at the, the, here's the cusps and now it's going backwards. And I've done this before where I've found the MB2 before the MB1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm like, well, that doesn't look right. There's just something off. And I don't have a comb beam of this case. Uh, I won't use, I normally don't, I don't have a comb beam at my fingertips in my office. Like Kevin does, which is amazing. Uh, but I don't have one. So I usually, I do these old school. And if I can't find anything, then we start thinking like maybe we should do a comb beam. So I'm going to trough a little bit more. Let's see what I, if I'm going to trough. I know I'm troughing. Okay. So this is what I've been burned before. So what's happened is, is that the pulp horn is a little bit more mesial and we're going to trough just a little bit up here. Now I'm getting into white material. So I'm like, eh, maybe not. Oh, got our air water syringe in the way. That doesn't help our video, does it? She means well. Dana's amazing. So I'm going to trough. There we go. Okay. So this is what we're doing. Let's go back here. So what I'm going to do is I don't find anything... Sorry guys. So I don't find anything up here where kind of the pulp horn is. So what I'm gonna do, if I don't find anything real quick, I'm looking for any type of white line, white dot. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually troughing from the orifice towards the mesial buckle one. And as I start it, I can see a, see a little white stuff there. It's like, oh, in my mind, I'm thinking, we got it. I can't, you know, like, okay, this is MB1 is a little bit further towards the mesial buckle. And as you can see it, we unroof more and more of that, of that orifice. In my, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm like, yes, we got it. So I'm going to stick a little file in there. Let's just take a look. I know I had on one of the other videos that, um, 
somebody had posted, you know, micro opener would be helpful. Definitely micro openers. Look at that. Magic. So really one of the, you know, the lesson from this, and I burned myself before, and I've actually had to go back in a case because I was second guessing myself was that if the architecture in the external architecture looks the way it's supposed to but your orifices and this is the this is really one of the reasons why you need to spend the time clean and shape everything that you have first maybe not optrate it but go ahead and clean and shape it and then start looking for the things you don't have that you know are there are going to be there because it allows you to triangulate and that's really the lesson from today triangulation just like i'm teaching my kids boy scouts because we're homeschooling um and i don't know how to do their uh mathematics today because we all we just know old school so this is the mb so all i did was i troughed you know initially i troughed palatally and i couldn't find it so i troughed um buckley in this case and boom there it was and that's our mb1 so searching for mb1 can be sometimes a little bit you need to put your investigation hat on so you know this is a standard situation where you just kind of like go ahead and you know honestly uh go ahead and just take your six eight you know six eight ten c file sequence um and do that now one of the things that i was taught in my residency from a prosthodontist was talking about just before i end this because i think we're getting close to 10 minutes was this kind of makes sense because of where the restoration was now the restoration was very heavy in the mesial and let's take a look at the at, you know look at how deep that box is and let's look on the bite wing you know, it actually makes sense that the, the mesial buckle MB1 and maybe not the MB2, but the MB1, one of them would be a little bit more heavily calcified potentially if we're trying to, you know, reverse kind of figure out why this happened. Um, because we did have a large deep restoration and the pulp is going to try to retract from that. So it makes a little more sense that um, in this case that those mesial, especially the mesial buckles, both of them would be a little more difficult to find. So I, I showed Magic the uh, the video afterwards, and we had a good laugh. I said, "Man, you're amazing because you found the MB2 before MB uh, MB1. So great job!" So there, I'm just talking to Dana, the dental assistant, just uh, about what we found, and then we're good. So this is just standard open, you know, chrono, open the chrono two thirds. Continue with our cleaning and shaping, finding our working length. And that is pretty much it. I know there's a request out there to show the operation tips. Let me just do that real quick. It's really simple. I'm just doing a single cone technique by uh, Ali Nase. I'm gonna use my activator. We're gonna use some EDTA and I can go into more depth afterwards. We're gonna dry. And there's our finished case. So this is not debris or anything like that. It's just kind of where I was, where I was looking, troughing. So there's our just a buckle. There's our MB1, there's our MB2, and there's our palette. There we go, that's a better focus. There's our tooth. And the finish looks like, do 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 do, there's our working length cone, cone shot, and there's our final shot, working length, or our final, um, final obturation. So, Hopefully that helps. I'm trying to keep them short. Let me know, you know, like I said, let me know if you want to see the full, see the full thing. I can post it up there. And if you're looking for my gear guide, it's right here. You can go ahead and hopefully this link works. And let's just double check it right now. It works. Go ahead and fill it in and boom, we'll send it to you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.